Hi everybody, uh, we are welcoming you for a new webinar on the AVC10H. So this will be a new reference amplifier that will be presented by Roland Kruger today. And also me and uh, Frederick will be there for all the Q&A. We will let uh, now uh, Roland start this presentation and I hope you will enjoy it for this amazing product. Yeah, thank you very much, Jan. Thanks, thanks Frederick. So, yeah, so I um, hope you can enjoy this because this is a really, really great product. It's uh, the, the small brother, you can say, of our flagship AVR from Denon. So it's the AVC A10H, as Jan said. So it's, it's an AV amplifier and it's actually replacing the AVC X8500H. But it also contains an A in the naming. And this means it belongs no longer to the X series, this class, this class is now belonging to the A series. This model is also available, let's say, in, in, in black and in premium silver, and it will be available in, in Europe and Asia from uh, November 2024. So we still have um, two months to go to, to have it in, in our stores. This is just a small overview about the key highlights of this model. As said, so it's the successor of the AVC X8500HA. And as you know, so the AVC X8500H itself, so is in our portfolio since uh, 2018, so quite quite a long, long time. So we had a hardware upgrade, of course, so adding HDMI 2.1 functionality. So meaning 40 gigabit per second on one input and on two outputs. This was in 2021. And of course, this model is produced in our, in our Shirakawa works in Japan. So uh, it's really quality guaranteed. We have, of course, a few news to share with here. So all the news which are in between, so meaning since 2018, until 2024 all the products which came out in the meantime of course have some feature sets which is now included so we have the new hd gui so which which is the new graphical user interface which we bring with the um, 800 series of denon so the 3800 2800 and even 1800 we have of course this uh, three parts so these three piece construction meaning we have two side panels, we have one uh, top cover in here, which is very, very robust and which is, which is shared in between the whole A-series. The A-series is something special. I actually started uh, at, to work for Denon in, in 1995, actually. So with the AVP A1, which was a pre-amplifier, but in 1996, where was the first let's say integrated amplifier, which was the AVC A1, which only has Dolby Digital on board and it was THX certified at this time. So then it has a long history. So we always, we always bring something new with a new A1 model. So with the AVC A1 SE, so we had, um, we had of course expanded to seven channels. So meaning from five channel 5.1 to 7.1, and we included, of course, the, the, the system, such systems like uh, DTSES and, and so on. So the AVC A1XV was another highlight, of course, with the, with the A1 series, or better to say with the A series. So featuring 10 amplifier channels in, in one product and also has some, let's say, some nice new technologies like uh, the, the Odyssey calibration, Odyssey Multi-Q X. Of course, when we, we are going into the Blu-ray age in 2007, and uh, we are having these new, nice little new uh, sound formats, which are HD sound formats, like Dolby True HD or DTS HD, and uh, this was first implemented in the AVC A1 HD. For the 10 series, so which we speak about today, so there were always, let's say, products which were small brothers, you can say, of the uh, flagship products, which was uh, first, of course, the AVC A10 SE, when we had the AVC A11 SR, which is also belonging to, to some, some kind of 10 series, 
And then we have the E11XV having the same feature set as the flagship, but maybe lower channel count. So, and when we bring, of course, in 2023, our new flagship, the AVC A1H, really popular, the number of amplifier channels, of course, with the AVC A1H was 15 channels, and we have also the ability to connect four subwoofers. So, and with the new one, with the AVC A10H, so we have the ability to connect 13 main channels plus our, to run 13 main channels at the same time. So we have 13 amplifiers also built in. And of course, you can connect four subwoofers as well as with all the new models in our X series. So in our higher X series from the 3800 onwards. But what is the A series all about? So the A series is all about, for example, um, the construction part. It's very rigid construction. It features the three layer bottom chassis. Uh, it doesn't matter which A series it is. It has a central power transformer which is very inherent to, to this A-series. You have the two amplifier blocks on the left and on the right side, um, really dividing the amplifier channels uh, from, from each other to have a better a channel separation in between. And you have, of course, these monolithic amplifier construction. You will find also monolithic amplifier construction, uh, let's say, in lower models, but this will never be symmetrically. Uh, also in, in the X series, yeah. And uh, you have um, also, which is quite new for the new A series, um, copper plate in between the heat sink, the extruded aluminum heat sink and the transistors. So to have really, really fast heat dissipation. We have classical AB, uh, class AB um, amplification built in the two series as well, of course. Yes, yeah, so what with regard to the internal design, so we have an all black interior now for the A series. It looks also quite nice if you take a look uh, in, into, into this unit. Um, you have these nice little uh, cover on the, so metal cover on the HEOS module. So meaning not only have a cooling effect, but also is really looking very nice because it has a hairline structure where the HEOS logo is graved in. And um, you have all the, the, the PCBs, which are four layer PCBs sometimes, or even more. So it's, uh, these are black colored circuit boards. Um, with regard to the technologies, which is one of the main points, of course, for, for all the products of Denon, is so we, we have the typical Denon technologies, like these dynamic discrete sound uh, surround circuit. Um, in the 32-bit version, which is called the Dynamic Discrete Surround Circuit HD for high definition, 32 for 32 bits, meaning we have discrete parts in the digital section. So we are not using one system on chip or whatever. So we really have discrete parts. So we have discrete uh, input chip for HDMI. So we have um, a discrete DSP, we have discrete DA converters. In this case, we are using uh, stereo two-channel DA converters, so even more discrete for high channel separation in between all these channels, but I will come to this later. And of course, you have the FPGA, which is responsible for the Denon technology, the AL32 processing. So meaning all the signals are really upsampled to, to 32 bits and uh, 192 kilohertz. So we have a freely assignable power amp, which means beside the center, I have to say it at, at this time. So beside the center, all the power amps are really freely assignable in the menu. We have, of course, a very, very high class volume circuit, which allows for very precise volume regulation of all the, yeah, let's say 13.4 or 15.4 channels in the A1H. Let's take a look under the hood. So when we maybe first look at, at the power supply and in the power supply, we have, of course, the hefty transformer, for example. So we have the large capacitors and so the power supply, of course, is mainly responsible for the, um, let's say, power amplifiers. We have the two power amplifiers, amplifier blocks in a monolithic construction. 
to minimize crosstalk and noise, which I also said before. So we have this monolithic power um, amp. So each piece, there's a PCB for each channel. And these channels are also separated um, on to two amplifier blocks. And in the middle, there is the transformer, which separates, of course, the two amplifier blocks from each other. And then with this model, all the power amp modules are really built in 90 degrees to the, the heat sink. What we also have, because there could be from, from the power transformer, which is an AI transformer, AI transformer has some advantages with regard to the power output, but has also some disadvantages. The magnetic field around the power transformer, it's really stronger, it's not in a ring, so it's, it goes outside. And to prevent uh, that magnetic field, of course, we put um, a really leakage flux separator into this unit. And the leakage flux separator separates the power transformer from the, all the PCB boards in the backside of the unit. So therefore, no leakage flux can influence from the power transformer to all the other PCBs on the backside of the unit. So this is a very, very uh, nice, nice thing in here to prevent uh, any disturbances from, from the power transformer. And what we are using for really, really stable power output, we are using the, the so-called DHCT transistors. The normal transistor consists only of uh, bases, emitter and collector, which, meaning, which, which are three connections. But as you can see here in this picture in the middle and uh, down in the middle, so we, we have four actually. Um, and the fourth thing is um, thermal sensor, thermal sensor. So which is directly within the transistor. Usually you have a thermal sensor which is external. So and then you have it in between two transistors, you have this thermal sensor. But if the thermal sensor is integrated in the package of a transistor, it's even faster and it can even correct the, 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 the current, so the driving current of a transistor even better. So it, it can adapt so that the transistor is always working in his perfect operating range and is purely uh, linear. So we only use these transistors for the A series. So we only use it for the A10H now and we only use it for the A1H. What is the evolution from the X8500 HA? Of course, you see it. We have this separator block, which was also not present um, uh, in the X8500H to, let's say, also improve the signal to noise ratio. But we also have uh, some modifications within the power transformer. It's completely uh, using OFC for the internal, let's say, windings of a transformer. And everything now is really, really black for the, for the um, capacitors in the power supply. So we were exchanging the, the, the anode for so meaning we are uh, having a bit of a different, different chemistry in these, um, in these capacitors. We improved the conductivity for really a very, very fast and speedy sound. Uh, especially with the modifications, yeah, with the OFC and of course with the chemistry in there. So, so we can, can be even faster driving all the 13 uh, channel speakers. So it's, it's really also enough, let's say, capacity to drive all the 13 channels in parallel with a decent amount of uh, power. If you look into the unit, it really looks all very, very well sorted and very clean. So the DA converter section is actually, so we, we took over a lot of the AVCA1H. So we take the same DA converter from the AVCA1H, but we just reduced the number of channels by two. So we reduced the number of DA converter by one because it's only a two channel DA converter, which is great because uh, it's also a ESS DA converter. We are using ESS Sabre DA converter which is a current output DA converter, then we, of course, have to be a bit more precise in the analog domain because we have to convert the current output into a voltage output. So there's these IV 
uh, conversion process where we talked a bit of, uh, in, in the AVCX uh, 6800H webinar. It's actually, it's very, very similar process, but the DA converter here is of course uh, completely different. Um, because we are, as, as I said before, we are using two-channel DA converters. It's not always easier to have a two-channel DA converter in, in such a system. No, it's not easier. It's even, it's even a very complicated, or it makes the it makes the whole thing uh, even more complicated. Not only because you have these, um, you need to have a uh, high-quality AV conversion circuit afterwards for each of the DA converters. But you also need to have uh, the same clock because if you only have one DA converter, it's really easy to have the same clock for all the channels. But you need to have a very, very precise clock which reaches all the DA converters, let's say it, uh, with perfect timing. So, and, and we have it uh, so in here, so because we also adapt a, a master clock circuit which we also use in the AVC A1H. So wherefore we have very, very precise master clock, which sits in the middle. So you can see this here, this is the beginning of a blue arrow. And then it reaches all the DA converters uh, on the right and on the left side of, in, of, this, uh, of this PCB in here. So we have also integrated into each of the DA converters uh, clock jitter reduction system. So, which, which is very active. So, we really reduce the digital jitter uh, to an absolute minimum in here. So, this is very, very important. And of course, the result is worth it to use really these separate DA converters because also the channel separation is much, much higher if you use it because we do not combine in one DA converter, for example, front left, front right channel, but we do combine maybe front left with a subwoofer two or with a subwoofer three, front right with a subwoofer four channel. So we really um, combine, let's say, completely different channels so that you have less crosstalk between very, very important channels like the front right or front left. I say less crosstalk, nearly none crosstalk with regard to the digital domain or the digital to analog conversion. So, and as a result, so we have a very, very clear sound. We have a very accurate sound, which is the Denon sound philosophy, of course. So next thing is, of course, two PCBs. Maybe we go one back. So we go completely into the digital domain where we have all these HDMI chipsets. So we are, of course, supporting um, HDMI, let's say 40 gigabit per second HDMI bandwidth on all seven inputs which is there which is quite the same as we do on the AVC A1H and which is also the same on the 6800 so there's rather no change from these models because we are also using the same uh the, the same let's say software and board and chipset all over the line which is honestly speaking not bad you can never ignore issues with regard to HDMI and if you have the same platform in all the products if you do a bug fix or if you do an improvement so you can do it at the same time for all the models which is actually very very great so this is the hdmi board so it's also all black design meaning it has all the digital circuits on on this we, we also have the heos module which is also digital of course which is responsible for our network connectivity the HDMI functionality, as I said, is completely identical to the 6800. Uh, you can say so to the latest version of, of HDMI uh, functionality, which we built in, which is the 6800H, of course. And yeah, so if you compare it, of course, to the AX8500HA, so where we only had one input, which is 8K able or 4K 120. So we have all the inputs which are able to do this. We have a new G GUI, as I said in the beginning. So meaning with a new HEOS chipset, which is built in here, we are able to have this high resolution GUI and this high resolution setup assistant, which makes it very, very easy to run the setup per, per process and also um, is really, yeah, you can say a bit more colorful and you have a lot of animations in it which guides you through the process. 
Um, and of course, we have another DSP in here. It's a, it's a two-core DSP, a dual-core DSP, which, which is in here, which is the same as in the AVC A1H. Yeah, let's, let's talk a bit more about HEOS built-in because this is the latest HEOS module, of course, which we are using in here, which is capable, of course, of the AC standard. So it features all the latest updates to the HEOS platform. As you know, so HEOS is our network solution which provides you with uh, internet radio, which provides you with streaming services like um, yeah, you can have Spotify, Connect, you have Tidal, now you have Tidal Connect in high res everything is there, these are hi-fi and uh, of course this product will also get Rune, Rune ready. So maybe from, from, from start but maybe also um, a bit later on, so it will come via software update. We have a Bluetooth transmitter, which is able also to, let's say, control the volume for your headphones separately from your speakers. So, which is very, very, um, which is a new feature for some of the 800 product, X800 products, like the 6800. And of course, you have a FIOS built in, so you have all the multi-room capabilities, which EOS is able to deliver. There's some new feature. The AVC 810H will be the first AV amplifier which has a mandatory HEOS account login. If you want to connect the unit to Wi Fi, so you need to have a HEOS account, you need to set up a HEOS account. Of course, the HEOS account can be also set up with your HEOS, um, with, with your HEOS app, and it will then be automatically uh, also um, transferred, of course, to, to, to the AVC. You can control it via the Denon Remote app and, of course, via the HEOS app. There are a lot of third-party, let's say, uh, control capabilities and there are uh, control for drivers, which we in program internally, of course. So for the pre-amplifier section, which is then, of course, the pure analog part uh, in this. So we have, of course, a lot of analog inputs. We have a lot of analog outputs. Um, we have pre-outputs for all the channels, so we have actually even two more pre-outputs, um, uh, meaning so we have 15.4 pre-amplifier outputs, um, but we do not, we do only feature 13.4, let's say, processing in this unit, but you can connect, for example, two speaker pairs at the same time and uh, according to, let's say, the, the signal which comes in, uh, either this speaker or that speaker is then running. We have a high precision volume control which is uh, which is featured in here and uh, the pre-amplifier mode which I talked about now it's um, it's also a selective one. You can select uh, which channels you want to use the pre-amplifier for and then for these channels the power amplifier is cut from the pre-amplifier section which gives you really less THD at higher volumes with your external pre-amplifier, which is, which is a great thing. We have, of course, selected parts for all these uh, products and uh, um, according to the Denon sound philosophy, so Yamauchi-san was also tuning this unit according to the Denon sound philosophy, as I, as I told you before. For the remote control, we are using actually the same remote control as the AVC A1H which has a backlight functionality, so you have to press the button on the side and then there will be some, some green backlight. It's, it's a very high quality, let's say, aluminium finish on, on top of it, and it's a hairline finish, which makes it even, even nicer to look at. Um, yeah, so, and uh, yeah, Yamauchi-san is, is really, really proud to, uh, on, on the sound of, of her, uh, AVC A10H. So, um, and uh, not only he he was he was very proud because we listened to to this unit. We all three listened to this unit in, in Shirakawa, which was a um, great experience because uh, yeah, it, uh, we we did not expect such a huge huge leap um, um, in 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 sound quality, even even so from the 6800 to the AVC A, uh, A10H. So all these efforts were really valuable and uh, yeah, useful. 
So we have, um, of course, maybe again a, a short summary uh, of this. We, we are using really high class materials. We are using, of course, selected A series, especially for the A series parts for the A series audio parts in here. Everything is built in Shirakawa Works directly beside the engineers. So if there is any anything or any issues, so it's really very, very short connection. I, I mean, within the production. So, and uh, yeah, it's really drawing also attention to the details. Now in, in, this, in this session, I did not only tell you about sound quality and about, um, uh, about sound philosophy, about all these parts, but also about, let's say, design-wise, about interior design, about things looking really, uh, uh, really good. So this is uh, the comparison, of course, from the X8500HA to the AVC A10H. So as I, as I said before, yeah, you, if, if you look into the unit, you see what we really draw attention to really the, the details in, in here. Uh, although the X8500H was really also built on some of the principles of the A series, you can say. Yeah, there's a small comparison of, of these units. So the A1H uh, as of course the flagship model. So when we have the A10H, uh, the model we discuss in here and the X8500H. So you can use it to see the differences. There's also where you can see, of course, here the, 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 the ducts. So, and all these improvements, which we had over the A1500 but also a lot which we took from the A1H, uh, so meaning uh, elements of the, of the A series. So yeah, with, re with regard to the HEOS module, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's the latest HEOS module. It's even, uh, let's say, um, um, newer HEOS model when we use in the, in the AVC A1H. So there's also, let's say, um, the functionality which the A1H does not, not, not support, but the A10H supports, which is the volume control for the Bluetooth transmitter, which is a hardware side um, thing, and um, the WPA3 support, which we have with the um, A10H, so meaning latest security standards for Wi-Fi connection. This is the back panel. The back panel is also really crowded. <laughs> so, um, yeah, even more crowded than, than the back panel of the A1H. Why is this the case? Because yeah, the A1H does not have any analog video, for example. So we, we hear also feature like the 6800 or the 4800, we have some analog video inputs just to connect maybe your old game console or whatever, whatever you like. So uh, we also have, of course, the, the USB on the back side. So if you, if you have, for example, or Fire TV stick from Amazon, so you connect the power uh, to, to this back USB and draw power from this back USB. So it's only for drawing power, it's not for playing back music. So you have your USB port for music on the front, of course. Um, and you see, uh, you, you also have these three trigger outputs, which, which was also the case with the 4800 and the 6800, but it's not with the A1H. So um, yeah. A lot of functionality is in here. We also have uh, Phono input, which supports Phono MM, and which is actually not that bad. So you can you can really connect your 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 um, high quality uh, turntable to it with an MM system. Yeah, this is also a short summary. I don't want to recap all the things. Maybe just say to you, of course, that we are supporting decoding of all the sound formats so in the let's say in the in the um sessions of the a1 on uh, one age and so we really draw attention to sound formats and to support of the sound formats of course it is the case that we are really supporting all of the sound formats also with the avc a10h meaning dolby atmos dtsx the 3D formats, then MPEG-H, Oro 3D with the Oro up mixer and the latest version. So we have IMAX Enhance, we have 360 degree reality audio. So all this is supported if you input the signal via the HDMI input in here. We also support out of the box Odyssey Multi-Q XT32, meaning the highest evolution version of the Odyssey 
um, of, of, of Odyssey calibration. You can, you can use your Odyssey app on an iOS or an Android device as well, but you can also have a Multi-QX license on your PC and then you can even do more. This is what you may all know. So or what we talked about in the past with, with other AV amplifiers a lot. And we have the option, of course, to use Dirac as the um, as a calibration system. And we um, for for Dirac, there is of course there was some news in uh, I guess it was in August. They now really simplified their license model. They now have uh, let's say for for our model, so we have only three licenses. You can say um, updates excluded. So we have for 259. So we have the limited Dirac version. So this is the entry, of course. Then you have for 349, so you have the room correction for full band, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So, and when on top of this, and it doesn't matter now how many subwoofers you are connecting to your unit. So you have the base control license for uh, additional $299. So this is a, very good simplification because 299 is also a lower price which when you had before for only one subwoofer now you can uh, have as much as subwoofers as you like and can use base control functionality from dirac um yeah so there are a few things which i which i also want to tell you because these are often forgotten so and that's why i want to use this webinar to to tell you about this so one thing I, I also told you before, so beside the center channel, so you can really freely assign the power amps in this unit. So you can have all power amps in this unit, for example, set to center, which is useless, but uh, yeah, ju just, just as an example. And um, you, this, this can be very useful if you are not having as many speakers or you are using, let's say, some power amplification so when you have three power amps and you can assign these three power amps for example to your uh, surrounds which you want to buy amp or to your surround backs which you want to buy amp or you can even let's say make a 5.1 by amping of although there is no option in this setup menu for the 6800 there's an option 5.1 by amping you won't find this in the a10h so in the a10h yeah, but you can easily do this with the free assignment option. Yeah, so the 8500H does not have the multiple assignment of the same HDMI input. So, but the it's from the X600 series, which came out in 2019. We have this feature. So you can assign the same, let's say, HDMI port to different inputs like CD, um, like DVD, and so on. So meaning... Um, you can just change with with these things uh, so you have same hdmi but maybe you have a different audio source for that same same picture but different audio source for that and then you can switch between these but in addition so if you think you don't have enough let's say input names so for the avc a10h and the avc a1h so you can add actually input names so virtual input names you don't have any connectors, but you can, of course, assign all the connectors to your virtual input names. So because with a simple press of two buttons at the same time, so you can you are able to add uh, auxiliary three to auxiliary seven, meaning four um, virtual sources to the unit and then assign, let's say, the same HDMI input as you assign for DVD to it and, and make it more, more interesting. But very interesting feature for CI, of course. Yeah, so we have Odyssey, we dis discussed before, we have Direct, so there's also one thing written to the ART integration, so um, more updates on that we will see soon, but we are definitely working on it. We have, of course, the four quick select buttons, and this is so as you may remember not only quick select buttons which really uh, memorizes all the settings which are available for quick select but these are quick select buttons with very selective user defined choice of maybe memory options um, which you can which you can put on for example you can on, only put a station 
on a radio station on quick select number one, but you do not have to put a volume level on, on number one or not have to put a sound mode on number one. So very, very selective memory options with it. We have uh, two different speaker um, configurations. These are, these are supported since the model in 2020. And of course, which were not the case with the AVC X 8500H since it came earlier in the basic version. Um, yeah, and of course we are using the latest version of HDMI diagnostics, very useful tool if you are a CI, um, if, you, if you are an, an installer or if you're working in customer support, sometimes you have an issue and you can detect this issue and uh, uh, also this latest version is including an H edit, uh, so ADID, um, which is the information protocol in HDMI. So um, they exchange the all the units exchange ADID information, and you can manipulate this. So if you are an expert on this, of course you can select maybe a manipulation. So you can memorize, for example, the edit of your sync device to prevent some issues uh, if the sync device goes into standby or something like this. Um, yeah, but. Here, more features with regard to HDMI diagnostics is coming soon. So we are saw a lot of very, very interesting things in Shirakawa, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, let's say, spoil too much in here. So therefore, we may have a lot of questions. Thank you very much, um, and hopefully, it was not too long. No, quite on time. Yes, exactly. Yes. And we do have a couple of questions. Jan, do you want to go? Yeah, yeah um, we'll start. So we have first questions. The first question, can you have the Dolby Atmos tracks on a title as well on high, on Heos Title Connect? That's a good question. I can jump in for that one. So yeah, you, you know the answer, of course, Jan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, Frederick. For the moment, it's so limited. Heos, to only yeah. HEOS chip only decodes two channels. Uh, yeah. In order to demonstrate Atmos on an AVR, I would not recommend Tidal because they have an issue with their uh, loudness mitigation. The files are quite low and you need to turn it up really high. So in order to demonstrate Dolby Atmos on an AVR, I recommend using an Apple TV, connecting it via the HDMI input, and then using Apple Music. They have lots of music tracks uh, in a different way, similar to what Tidal has to offer, but their loudness levels are different and you will have much nicer dynamics. You don't have to turn it up all the way. So yeah. yes, uh, HEOS, Tidal Connect, yes. Uh, also, we enabled that, uh, I think it was July 24th with that firmware update, we offered Tidal Connect and this would normally work with any HEOS device, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Jan. Or uh, you're correct, only HEOS HS1 are limited, so no, HS, all HS2 and all the new ones, no problem. So it's, it's quite perfect. Uh, Tile Connect is really available since U34, if I don't make any mistake on the version, so you will have it available now. We have then the next question, is the Bluetooth transmitter suitable for AV sources without latency, only for audio or only for audio sources? The question is about the headphone. There will still be some latency. It's a Bluetooth issue, but yeah. you can use it. Yeah, so, it depends also on the signal. So it's yeah. it's really it's really uh, dependent on on the signal which which is coming in. Of course, for Dolby Atmos soundtracks, so the latency is the longest, honestly speaking. So because okay. it, it needs to be decoded, um, and uh, even with the decoding, so you you lose some time, but you also lose some time with with your television. So with your television and bringing the picture on on your television there. So it's. Uh, so it's not in sync, but we improved it, by the way. So it's uh, it's better than the first version which we had, which we originally bring in uh, 2019 with the 3600. The X3600 was the first unit which features the Bluetooth transmitter. And uh, since then, it is improved. We will further try to do what we can, but actually there are also hardware limitations in that. 
Yeah, yeah so, so the same low up. latency. I think the low latency that the improvement was also coming out with the same firmware as the Tidal Connect, so like last month yep. or two months ago. Right. Exactly. So it's improved, but it's still a small latency, so don't expect the perfect uh, synchronization. Um, so here I schreibe in Deutsch. Okay, so uh, can I see real loudspeaker damit übertragen? Okay, the question is, can my, is it possible to have a surround speaker with the Bluetooth transmission? No. So this is not possible. It's just normal front uh, sound. So it's just stereo that we will have on the Bluetooth. So we cannot use it to uh, have it on surround speakers. Yeah, I think the Bluetooth transmission basically takes the headphone output, which is a down mix of whatever signal you're getting yeah. and outputting to your speakers. And that stereo signal is then transmitted via Bluetooth, right? Yeah, so it's a global signal, so it's not meant for Bluetooth. Uh, okay, the second question in German. HDMI out, can man add a drive with Okay, uh, the question is, do we have 4K on all the three outputs on HDMI? Uh, no, we still have uh, the two mains, the main and the recopy, what I call the, the, the normal zone, the copy of the zone one, is just the same 4K. And the zone three is what we call the zone two, but the third one is uh, just 1080p. So we cannot have a full 4K on the three outputs on the HDMI. It's just the two mains. If it's yeah, so, you're following up. So Sorry, yeah, the, the, the two mains, the two main outputs, of course, meaning so uh, the, the two main TV outputs, they are no longer called monitor, by the way, <laughs> on the yeah, back side, so there's now a TV. Uh, that's that's also interesting, but yeah, the, the the two outputs so can handle, of course, signals up to 40 gigabit per second. So meaning yeah. you can also transfer 8K signals and uh, 4K 120 signals. But the zone two output is only able to handle 4K 60 signals. So meaning 80 gigabit per second. Max. Yeah, I think he's following up actually on one of the same. If you're using mixed resolutions at the same time, for example, you have a 4K projector in the living room and then in the other zone using a 1080p, will that then all be kept or is it going to downsize to whichever is the lowest uh, resolution? Is, uh, okay, okay, sorry. No, no everything yeah. will be downsized. Yeah. Everything will be downsized because it's linked to the source. The source will receive the signal that what is the lowest, so the source will go back to 1080p, so we cannot have multiple output from one source. Yeah, okay, so in other words, if the projector is 4K and a 1080p in the second room, the receiver will say, hey, your lowest device is 1080p, I will output everything simultaneously at 1080p, correct? It's 1080p, exact, yeah. So the source cannot have two different output in the same cable, that's the issue. Okay. Amazon uh, Music. <laughs> is Amazon uh, Music is that, also no. via AVR? Yeah, same thing, right? Anything that yeah. will output through the Apple TV Plus, whether it's Amazon, Netflix, or uh, Apple Music, as long as it's Apple uh, using the Apple's uh, HDMI out, uh, you should be able to decode and receive uh, the app, the uh, app, the yeah. uh, Atmos signal. The Atmos signal, exactly. Thank you. I think we have no more. I have a couple extra here. Uh, any more? future online music streaming support? Any future? Uh, I think it's too early to talk about that, right? It's a bit early. Yes. Say, when does, yeah. So it's in yeah, it's a bit early, but the same what, what standard we... answer. Yeah. What what we talked about was of course um, um, Rune Ready, right? So uh, about music music support. So and and with Rune Ready, so if we get Rune Ready into the AVC A10H, that's currently it's really planned for having this at launch. So uh, being the AVC A10H, the first AV product which we can certify with Rune Ready, because we certified so far, so we have the Denon Home certified and we have some other, let's say, two-channel products certified. So the AVC A10H will be the first 
AV amplifier certified with Rune Ready. And with Rune Ready, so of course, Cobos is available. There is, uh, and, and there is your real, let's say, also your local, um, yeah, so your local local music and everything can be organized in a, in a very nice way. But as a side effect, so we can add Cobos by that very easily. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, an added convenience. I wouldn't call it a side effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the problem with Rune is the Rune uh, certification takes a long time, right? So they really want to take every single device that we have, and we will go through that process based on a priority list. They really want to check and test it completely before they make it official. So it's going to go in batches. We just have to stay tuned uh, to get uh, the other devices. There's one last question here. How is the sound quality of the A10? compared to the predecessor 8500HA? Yeah, we all could maybe take a guess because we heard, we listened to it in, in Shirakawa, but we listened to it uh, with re in, in comparison to the 6800. And this was, uh, I cannot I cannot tell you this wasn't in each aspect. So I, I don't I don't want to bash the 6800 now. But in, in every aspect, it was much better. So and and I remember listening the 6800 and compare it to the X uh, 8500, and I didn't hear this huge, let's say, <laughs> improvement. It's different. Yeah. So it's in in my opinion, it it must be much better. But we need to listen again. Of course, we need to listen in comparison. And uh, I'm, I'm really uh, positive looking forward to this because the direction is now at, at in, in, in 2018, also the sound direction was a bit different. Now it's really uh, vivid and spacious has a really more uh, higher rank with, with the sound master than it had ever before. So yeah. meaning also yeah. this philosophy completely changed and um, I would say it's it's a very a very high step up. Yeah, it's more precise, yes. more fine tuned. So it's really an it takes a, like the preamp on the AVCA one, like so it's more or less. So we have this uh, very low noise and very no noise floor, and this is the, the spacious is really more detailed than we have on on the others, and we get also more, I think, more presence in a in a blow part of the sound uh, it's the pressure is more higher so it's much more stable so i think we have a really great product here yeah the and a10 is basically the yeah go ahead we have a last question the zone 2 hdmi has 4k written on top of it so it's 4k yes it's 4k yet now but like we explained it's not 8k like the two first the mains can go to 8k so third one is just 4K. Before it was 4K, then 80P. Now it's 8K, 4K. I'm not, I'm, I'm clear. <laughs> I don't know if it was perfectly clear. Zone two is 4K compatible. Yeah, up to 4K, depending on what you're playing and whether you're playing it together with the main zone or not. Then it will yeah. down risk, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was gonna say the A10H. If everyone has heard the A1 and has heard the new direction we're going into, the A10 being the little sibling minus the two extra channels is getting very close to that because it uses the same technology. So we can say that it's a huge improvement versus the 6800. But then, of course, we're a couple of years later with a couple of different directions and newer technology as well. So. You wanted to add anything to that, uh, Roland or Jan? No, so it's perfectly yeah. fine. I would say this would be a perfect yeah. last sentence for this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're through all the questions. So I think we can close the session. Thanks everyone for uh, making your time and uh, joining us. Uh, there will be another one next week uh, for those interested. Can we disclose what the next week's uh, session is, Roland? I guess so. So yeah, it's it's a Marans webinar. So it's about the uh, model 60N, and I guess this will be um, uh, disclosed today. So there will be a press release by today. 
about uh, model Day 16 from Holland. So tomorrow, it's, uh, I think. Yeah, uh, it's I think to... it's tomorrow based on the time zone. Yes, there's a time yeah. zone uh, based... between the US and, and Asia. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's a two channel network amplifier uh, from Marantz. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. If you have questions, you know, you can email us. On the yeah. other hand, we also have the YouTube training channel. So we have a look at that one. We have a fairly up to date content as well. And this webinar will also be edited. That's it for today. Thank you very much. And until next time. Bye for now. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.